Hello class and welcome to unit one, video two. Today we're gonna to go ahead and look at percents and absolute values. Um, your learning targets are that you will be able to solve absolute value equations and also that you can convert units of measurement. The first thing we're gonna look at is absolute values. Um, an absolute value, uh, the absolute value of a number is the distance away from zero on the number line. Okay, distance is always measured, measured in positive values. So when I'm talking about distance, it will always be positive. So if you just want to note that, distance is always positive. So when I take the absolute value, I will always get a positive number. Okay, something to keep in mind. Um, so for instance, if I have the absolute value of 7, the answer is 7 because it is 7 units away from 0. Okay. But if I'm doing the absolute value of negative 7, since I'm measuring distance, negative 7 is also 7 units away from 7. Um, so to maybe think about this, you could say to yourself, well, if the absolute value of x is equal to 7, which it does in this case, you could say, well, what numbers could I have for x? I could have that x is equal to 7, or I could have that x is equal to negative 7, because when I plug them into the absolute value, I will always get a distance of 7. Another example that we have is to evaluate the following. So, absolute value signs are like parentheses. You should do what's on the inside of them first. Okay, so we're still following our rules of PEMDAS. So if I'm going to evaluate what I have here, I would have 1.4 plus, um, I'm gonna say five times negative three is negative 15. Okay, so plus my absolute value, what is negative 15 minus seven? Negative 15 minus seven is a negative 22. Okay, so we have the absolute value of negative 22, so I have 1.4 still, plus the absolute value of negative 22, which is gonna be positive 22. And then I can add them together. 1.4 plus 22 is 23.4. So there is my uh, problem evaluated or simplified all the way. Okay, let's go ahead and look at another evaluate. So same as before, do what is inside the absolute values first. Here I have negative 4 plus 21, which is a positive 17. Uh, absolute value of a positive 17 will just be 17, so there's that negative in front, so I'll have negative 17 plus 6.2. And negative 17 plus 6.2 is a negative 10.8, and there it is. Okay, so there's a little bit of evaluating using absolute values. As pointed out um, in the problem earlier, um, when solving an absolute value equation of the form, absolute value of ax plus b equals c, you're going to rewrite it as a compound statement. Okay, It can either be equal to c or it can be equal to a negative c. So c or negative c. Because what I have in here could be a positive c, and the absolute value of a positive c is c, or it could be negative c. The absolute value of negative c would give me c. So that's why I said it equal to positive and negative c and solve. So, for instance, if I look at example A here, um, what would x have to be to make it true? Well, I know the absolute value of 5 is 5, and I know the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. So x could equal positive 5, or x could equal negative 5. Okay. Um, if I'm looking at B now, absolute value, we know it's always equal to, a, it's, absolute value is a distance, so it's always equal to a positive number. This is a negative number, so will it ever happen? No, this one is not possible. So what we would say is that means there's no solution. You can't do it. Okay, so this is a no solution. So if you have absolute values set equal to a negative, the answer is no solution. You cannot do that. So let's go ahead and solve something that is a little bit more complex. Um, we have the absolute value of b plus 15 is equal to 3. Well, I know that the absolute value of 3 is equal to 3. So I'm going to take what's on the inside and set it equal to 3 to solve. I also know the absolute value of negative 3 is equal to 3. So what's on the inside here could also equal negative 3. So 
4 b plus 15 is equal to negative 3. Then I would just solve them each individually. I would subtract 15, so b is equal to negative 12. I would subtract 15 on here, so b is equal to negative 18. So my two answers are b equals negative 12 or b equals negative 18. Now, I got these answers, but let's double check and make sure they're right. So if I plug them back in, I would have the absolute value of negative 12 plus 15. Does that equal 3? Well, negative 12 plus 15 is 3. The absolute value of 3, does that equal 3? Yes, it does. So that one works. I try 18. Negative 18 plus 15, the absolute value of that, does that equal 3? This is the absolute value of negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3, does that equal 3? Yes, it does. So those both work. So you can always go back and check your answers to make sure they're right, and I would highly recommend that you do so. Moving on to problem three. This one is a little bit trickier. There is an absolute value plus four. Okay, You cannot go ahead and break it into solving for two problems until you get the absolute values all by yourself. So remember, the absolute value has to be all by itself first. Okay, So first thing I would do is subtract four. Okay, I have 3n plus 2 is equal to negative 4. Okay, now that the absolute values are by themselves, I could break it into 2, but if you notice, remember we're measuring distance. Does distance ever equal a negative? No. So this is an example of a no solution. Okay, that is example 3. Moving on to example 4. Um, let's go ahead and solve this one. Once again, before I do anything, I have to get my absolute values all by themselves. Okay, They have to be alone in order to break it into two. So first thing here is I'm undoing PEMDAS. Okay, So we're working our way backwards on PEMDAS. So I undo adding and subtracting first. So I would subtract the 4. So I would have 3, absolute value of x plus 5 is equal to, not 16, it's going to be equal to 12. 12. And then I did my adding and subtracting, now I'm going to undo, multiply, and divide. So I would divide both sides by 3. So I have absolute value of x plus 5 is equal to 12 divided by 3 is 4. Here is where it can break apart into my 2 because I have the absolute value. So I would solve x plus 5 is equal to 4, and I solve x plus 5 is equal to negative 4, because what's on the inside here could be 4, the absolute value of 4 is 4, and what's on the inside, um, if I have the absolute value of negative 4, will also give me 4, so I have to solve them both. So I would subtract 5 from both sides, and I would get that x is equal to negative 1, subtract 5 on both sides here, and I get x is equal to negative 9. So my solutions for this one are x equals negative 1 or x equals negative 9. And if I want to, I can plug them back in and check at any time. Okay, that's it for absolute values. Um, so if you have any questions on absolute value, I would recommend that you write them down on your note sheet. Um, if you need to take a little break, now would be a great time to take a break and pause it and come back and do the second um, part of the note sheet or the back side of the note sheet. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and move on to conversions. So here we have listed some basic conversions. One foot is 12 inches. One mile is 5,280 feet. One yard is three feet. Okay. Then we're moving on to the metric system we have here. Uh, one centimeter is 10 millimeters. Uh, one meter is 100 centimeters. And one kilometer is 1,000 meters. And lastly, we have some time issues. One minute, 60 seconds. Not time issues, time conversions. Sorry, we have one minute is 60 seconds. One hour is 60 minutes. And we all know one day is 24 hours. OK, so those are the conversions we're going to be using. We'll probably use a few other ones. Um, but if you need to look something up, feel free to you know, Google you know, how many days are in a year if you need to. So the way we're going to convert is we want to know how many seconds are in seven hours. So I am starting out with seven hours. And I always take what I'm trying to convert and I'm going to put it over one. 
if there's nothing else. So I have seven hours over one. Okay, we want to make it so eventually we have seconds. That is our goal. So what we need to do is say, well, if I want to go from hours to seconds, who would I go to next? Well, I know one hour is 60 minutes, so I'm going to try that. Okay, so I'm going to write down the conversion factor here. So I know one hour is 60 minutes. I wrote it with the hours in the bottom because you have to have the label on the top and the bottom in order for them to cancel. So those canceled and now if I were to multiply this out, I would have how many minutes are in seven hours. But that's not what I want. I want to get to seconds. So I would continue on with my conversion. So the next thing is how many, what do I know about minutes? Well, I know one minute, 60 seconds. So if I want my labels to cancel again, I would do one minute is 60 seconds. So once again, I would notice my minutes, there's one on the top, one on the bottom, the units will cancel. And I am left with seconds, which was our goal. So in order to actually figure out how many seconds it is, you multiply everything across in the numerator. So I would take seven times 60 times 60 over, it's one times one times one, so over one. Um, and that would give me how many seconds it is, okay? Well, um, that would give me seven times 60 times 60 is 25,200 seconds. And you can write it over one, but you don't need to. So. Seven hours is 25,200 seconds. Let's go ahead and look at another one. Okay, I left the conversions on top of each screen for you so you can see it, but it's also on your paper. Um, how many yards is 198 inches? All right, so I look at inches. I'm going to write it down. So it's 198 inches over one. We want to get to yards. Okay, well, here's yards, and I know how to get to feet. Do I have any feet that connect inches? One foot is 12 inches, so I'm gonna do that. Remember, now I want inches, so in order for it to cancel, I'd have to write it in the bottom. So 12 inches is one foot, and I notice my units cancel. Moving on, I get feet, but I really want yards. Well, I have this conversion factor here, so I want feet to be in the bottom, so three feet is one yard. Once again, I notice my units will cancel. I have yards, and is that what I want? Yes, it is. So then I go ahead and multiply everything across the numerators. So it's 198 times 1 times 1, so it's really just 198, over 1 times 12 times 3. So 12 times 3, and this will leave me with my label of yards. So I really have 198 over 12 times 3 is 36 yards, and if I divide that on my calculator, this will tell me that is 5.5 yards. So 198 inches is 5.5 yards. Okay. The next one gets a little bit trickier. Okay. We have how fast are you traveling in miles per hour if your current speed is 50 feet per second. All right. So currently I'm at 50 feet per second. This per, okay, whenever you see it like a division sign or if you hear the words per, it means division, okay? So right now, I have 50 feet over per second, so one second. My goal is to get to miles per hour. So I need to convert feet to miles and seconds to hours. So let's just do this one thing at a time. Let's convert our feet into miles first. Uh, the reason I'm doing that one first is because that's on the top, okay? So I say to myself, hmm, what do I know about feet and miles? Well, I know there are 5,280 feet in one mile. And if I look at that, my feet will cancel and I'm left with miles, which is what I want in my top. So we're good there. Now I just need to go ahead and take seconds and convert it into hours. So one second, we need to go from seconds to hours. So I know that 60 seconds is one minute. Okay, so my label of seconds are canceled out. If I continue on, um, what do I know about minutes? I want to get to hours. I know that 60 minutes are in one hour. So if I look at this, my minutes cancel and I'm left with hours, which is what I want. So that is good. So I made it to my goal. Okay, just ignore that piece right now. 
Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and actually multiply it out. I would have 50 times 60 times 60 in my numerator. And in my denominator, I have 5,280 times 1 times 1. Okay, And this is going to leave me with a label of miles in the numerator, because that's what I ended with here, over hours. So that's miles per hour. So 50 times 60 times 60 is 180,000 over 5,280. And if I divide that out, I get 34.09 miles per hour. Okay, Or you could label that as 34.09. And you can write it as miles per hour like you see on speed, speeding signs. Speed limit signs. All right, we have one more problem to do. Um, this is another traveling one, except for this one is kilometers per hour. Okay, so we want to go. We have a car speedometer says you're traveling at 50 kilometers per hour. How fast are you traveling in meters per second? All right, so let's start out with I am traveling at 50 kilometers per one hour. And I want to get to meters per second. Okay, so let's start out with the top again. We're going to take kilometers and go to meters. If you look at the top of your note sheet, um, you can see that one kilometer is 1,000 meters. So I'm going to mark that down. So one kilometer is 1,000 meters. So I would see that my labels of kilometers will cancel, and I'm left with meters, which is what I want. So got that taken care of. Now I'm going to go from hours to seconds. So hours, well, what do I know about hours? I know that one hour is how many minutes? 60 minutes. So one hour is 60 minutes. So my label of hours cancel. I don't want minutes. I want seconds, so I continue. I know that one minute is 60 seconds. My label of minutes will cancel. And if I look, I will see that I have meters per second, which is what I wanted. Now I just need to go ahead and multiply to find my answer. So in my numerator, I would have 50 times 1,000 times 1 times 1. So I'm not going to write those down. Then I have 1 times 1 times 60 times 60. So 60 times 60. So this goes ahead and gives us 50,000 over 3,600. And if I divide that out, I will get 13.9 meters per second. So there is my conversion. So 50 kilometers per hour is 13.9 meters per second. Okay. Um, this is it for the end of our notes video for today. So if you have any questions, please be sure to write them down. Um, otherwise, your next step is going to be to complete Unit 1, Notes 2, Practice. But please, if you have any questions, feel free to come and ask me. Otherwise, have a great day.